Neuroophthalmology, Wikipedia article audio. Neuroophthalmology is an academically oriented subspecialty that merges the fields of neurology and ophthalmology, often dealing with complex systemic diseases that have manifestations in the visual system. Neuroophthalmologists initially complete a residency in either neurology or ophthalmology, then do a fellowship in the complementary field. Since diagnostic studies can be normal in patients with significant neuroophthalmic disease, a detailed medical history and physical exam is essential, and neuroophthalmologists often spend a significant amount of time with their patients. Description Notable neuroophthalmologists Future Common pathology referred to a neuroophthalmologist includes afferent visual system disorders and efferent visual system disorders. The largest international society of neuroophthalmologists is the North American Neuroophthalmological Society, which organizes an annual meeting and publishes the Journal of Neuroophthalmology. Neuroophthalmologists are often faculty at large university based medical centers. Patients often have co-existing disease in other fields, thus the neuroophthalmologist is often a liaison between the ophthalmology department and other departments in the medical center. Neuroophthalmology focuses on diseases of the nervous system that affect vision, control of eye movements, or pupillary reflexes. Neuroophthalmologists often see patients with complex multi-system disease and zebras are not uncommon. Neuroophthalmologists are often active teachers in their academic institution, and the first four winners of the prestigious Strahatsma American Academy of Ophthalmology Teaching Awards were neuroophthalmologists. Most neuroophthalmologists are passionate about their discipline and report high job satisfaction stating that they think the field continues to be both fascinating and challenging. Neuroophthalmology is mostly non-procedural, however, neuroophthalmologists may be trained to perform eye muscle surgery to treat adult strabismus, optic nerve fenestration for idiopathic intracranial hypertension, and botulinum injections for blepharospasm or hemifacial spasm. Two neuroophthalmology fellows of Andrew G. Lee published reasons why they chose to pursue the discipline. The neuroophthalmologist is often the subspecialty that others turn to when the etiology of visual decline is in question. They are often uniquely suited to provide a global and comprehensive perspective to any complex medical, neurologic, ophthalmologic, or neurosurgical case. A neuroophthalmology patient has often already seen two, if not three or more other specialists by the time they arrive at our door. We particularly enjoy the sense of satisfaction, medical accomplishment and difference we can make in patients' lives when able to discover a diagnosis and treat the condition. What makes the neuroophthalmologist unique is the global viewpoint of the integration and interaction of complex and systemic disorders on visual function. There is no routine day for us in neuroophthalmology clinic as there is always an interesting patient from which we can learn. Any day can hold a combination of corneal, retinal, optic nerve, rheumatologic, neurologic, infectious, or neurosurgical variety. Frank B. Walsh was a pioneer of neuroophthalmology, helping to popularize and develop the field. Walsh was born in Oxbow, Saskatchewan in 1895 and earned a degree from University of Manitoba in 1921. He joined the Wilmer Ophthalmological Institute at Johns Hopkins University and began organizing Saturday morning neuroophthalmology conferences. Walsh compiled the first neuroophthalmology textbook, which was published in 1947 and has been updated over the years by generations of his students. 
Doctors have been decreasing the time spent with a patient due to economic pressures, the use of non-physicians, and increasing reliance on laboratory tests. Neuroophthalmology has been affected more so than other specialties due to the complexity of the patients and the time required to do a neuroophthalmic history and physical exam. Additionally, the current medical reimbursement system rewards quantity of service rather than quality of service, and seeing complex patients is not adequately recognized. Improved functional neuroimaging is paving the way for better understanding, assessment, and management of many neurologic and neuroophthalmologic conditions. As our understanding of neuroscience evolves, neuroophthalmologists are becoming increasingly better at treatment, rather than only diagnosis, and novel therapies are emerging to treat traditionally vision devastating disease. For example, Clinical trials began in February 2014 to use gene therapy to treat labor hereditary optic neuropathy, which is one of the first uses of gene therapy in the central nervous system. Progress has also been made in understanding retinal ganglion cell regeneration and in re-establishing synaptic connections from the optic nerve to the brain, more than in other regions of the central nervous system. One of the goals of the National Institutes of Health is to use the visual system as a window to understand neural plasticity and regenerative medicine in the central nervous system, an area of neuroscience that has a promising future and is intimately intertwined with neuroophthalmology. The financial environment for academic neuroophthalmologists must be addressed so that there is the clinical infrastructure to treat patients assess and implement emerging technologies and treatments, and train the next generation of neuroophthalmologists. Given the direction of ophthalmic and neurologic research, it is imperative to continue to have a vibrant academic neuroophthalmologic community for the future.